Boy, this peace rush combo, unstoppable. Surprisingly, Nagi made a quick meal of Iragi and we may have seen the reason why he decided not to pick him. I'm super impressed with the speed in which they came back and some of the growth seen here is actually a good explanation of the growth seen in the NEL, especially in the case of Chigiri and Baro. In the end, they made light work of Team White and definitely got stronger in the process. Chigiri's explanation in the previous chapter, which confused everyone, made more sense here when seen in practice. He's actually a super underrated player, since we tend to forget that he's also a prodigy and at full speed is pretty much unstoppable. Before we get into the chapter, please do me a favour guys, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The goal is 500 subs before the end of the month, so let's lock in and make it happen. Hearing that Hiragi plans on taking Nagi from them, Chigiri and Baro get serious and they're determined not to lose again. Just like Isugi said, instead of feeling sorry for yourself for not being chosen, be the one that does the choosing instead. And to do that, they must overcome their weakness. At this time, Nagi hasn't yet figured out what he needs to do and so he's a little bit behind. Hiragi's arrogance starts to show as he believes that his big day of football can't easily be overturned. But as they say, pride comes before the fall. And straight away from kickoff, we see Chigiri sprint directly towards him, whereas normally he finds space that he can easily run into and receive the ball. See, the plan's not just to overcome their weaknesses, it's to turn their weaknesses into strengths. By running through the crowd, Chigri was able to draw the whole team white in. With his jungle jam run, he created space for both Nagi and Baro. Nico quickly realizes this and so directs Zantetsu to stop Nagi, but again, this means that Baro is free and seeing this, Nagi sends it his way. This bit really surprised me, the same way I was surprised in the first time that Baro passed the ball backwards in the Ubers match. It all makes sense now. Baro is a guy that hates to pass, but his new resolve actually means that he's willing to pass the ball if it's for the sake of his own goal and pride, but also as long as it's not to Isagi. <laughs> nah, that's funny, man. This guy really said he's gonna pass to anyone but Isagi. That's actually so petty, but I love it and I'm here for it. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense. We've seen Baro pass the ball before. Remember in the first selection? Baro actually provided an assist to one of his teammates and yes, it was on purpose. But Isagi is the first person to actually force him to pass and taking that subordinate role almost broke him. So I fully understand why he'll never pass to Isagi again. By overcoming these weaknesses, we got to witness one of the greatest double speds in the series so far. The art in the Beast Rush panel is exquisite. So much detail that I didn't even attempt to colour it. The lion and the panther both bearing the fangs on the opponent's goal. Yeah, it's a good thing the blue lock man was in goal because anyone else would have pissed their pants and run off the pitch. A majestically scary sight. It's funny because Baro only passes the ball to Chigiri expecting him to send it back. But Chigiri said nah, screw that and scores for himself on the cheeky one. I absolutely love the way he strikes the ball every time. Ario would definitely approve. The score is now 3-1. And of course, Baro is pissed at Chigiri for taking the shot. These panels crack me up, man. One of the reasons why I love this series. These are character interactions that we'd never get to see in the main story. At least not this often. After conceding, the cracks in Hiragi's character begin to show. Straight away blaming my boy Nico. But obviously, data will only get you so far. Once new variables are introduced, the solution will also have to change. Kick off to Team White and being distracted, Nico almost concedes the ball to Baro. He holds him off well, which I love to see, but he's then ambushed by Chigri, who steals the ball from him straight away. Nico may have bitten off more than he can chew, as Chigri points out that he's picked the wrong team to face. Bless him. And Baro points out that Zantetsu's weakness is his lack of endurance. Zantetsu looks gassed out having to try to keep up with Baro. We already know that over a distance, his speed is less effective, which means he lacks endurance. Now compare that to someone diligent and disciplined such as Baro, who constantly trains and keeps himself in good shape. Yeah, long day. Baro scores Team Red's second goal as he and Chigiri have overcome their weaknesses. Chigiri then scores a third as these two start to control the flow of the match, making the score 3-3. Nico again realizes that it takes more than brains just to survive in blue lock. You need a huge ego, even if it means abandoning your pride, as Barrow makes it 4-3 to Team Red. 
turning the tides of the game completely. Hiragi has finally lost all composure, to the point where he's insulting Nico and Zantetsu. This guy, man. He tries to take matters into his own hands, demanding the ball off Nico, talking about, at this point, all I can trust is my own data and mine. As we actually see him do some bits, he flicks the ball over the oncoming Chigri and then proceeds with another rainbow flick over Barrow. As he proceeds with his inner monologue saying, in the end, other people are nothing more than data to help me live more conveniently. With one attack, I'll show them the data known as a goal. And then these ignoramuses will gain hope and they'll change their attitude and regain their motivation. That's how much people's hearts are controlled by data. So to control them, I'll become the data known as a hero. And this guy is so full of himself. I actually quite liked his character before, but now hearing his inner monologue, this guy might actually just be a prick. Don't get me wrong, I know a lot of these guys insult each other, but there's something about Hiragi that's just off. Maybe it's because I really like Nico and I don't like the way he's speaking about him. <laughs> Anyways, as he proceeds to flick the ball over Barrow, out of nowhere steps in Nagi. And it looks like he's getting into the flow of things. In this super cool panel, he takes the ball off Hiragi with his chest and says that his weakness of being a prodigy and so ignorant of football isn't something that he can fix right now. But as he proceeds to dribble with the ball, he starts to think, at this time, what would Isagi do? What would Rayo do? And that's when he comes to realize that his actual weakness is the fact that he can't fight on his own. He's constantly thinking about what Isagi and Rayo would do. Even though Hiragi's intelligence is like Isagi's, he says he feels like there's something definitively different. Hiragi uses a lot of data to control people and tries to force people into his own conceptions of things. But Isagi thinks in a completely different way. He believes in people enough to transcend that sort of thinking. In the light of new data, you need to adapt and change your strategy. And this, this right here, is what makes Isagi stand above the rest. Someone who's constantly adding new data and information and adapting to it on the fly, coming up with multiple different variables and scenarios to overcome the challenge. Yeah, the more we start seeing other players' perspectives, the more we start realizing just how much of a monster Isagi actually is. Nagi says that him and Rayo actually believed in him when nobody else did. But since there's no one like that with him currently, now he has to believe in himself. As we see him exchanging passes with Chigiri, Nagi proceeds to get his leg back. And I love it. Somehow, he manages to get Hiragi on all fours and humiliates him. As we see his deaf ego aura appear, Hiragi is distraught saying, You're... You're deaf itself. As Nagi smacks that ball right into the net in a beautiful sidewind bicycle kick, reminiscent of what Hiragi did to him earlier in the game. And so we see that even without Isagi Oreo, Nagi can still fight on his own. And can we just admire this goal panel here with the deaf tarot card and Hiragi presenting himself like a bad B. <laughs> nah, Nagi did him dirty, man. That one there was a violation. Personally, I wouldn't have it. I wonder if Nagi will continue to work on his football in IQ. We've already seen that he's abandoned his resolve to learning how to play without Isagi and Rayo in the NEL, which is a shame. But if he was actually to improve his football IQ, then he would definitely end up being one of the most creative players in the facility. That doesn't mean that he'll be a good playmaker like Isagi or Rayo, just that he'll be able to mix it with the others creatively. Because I see Nagi as a hold-up striker, a focal point, which was evident in one of the blue lock formations in a U20 game, where he was the target man when they had to switch to a defensive formation to hold their lead before half-time. This chapter may also show one of the reasons why Hiragi wasn't actually picked for Nagi's team. Once his data became useless, he started to crumble and couldn't adapt. But thinking of him and Nico being left behind really makes me feel for my boy Nico. He don't deserve that. Hiragi doesn't seem like a good guy. Nagi has him beat when it comes to trapping. And the truth is, he might just be an Isagi Nagi hybrid from Wish. But personally, I would have picked Nico because he's probably the closest thing to Isagi for this team. Nico would be able to stitch things together and also play a defensive role. But I guess we'll see the reasoning in the next chapter. Hopefully, anyways. It's a long wait, but there's plenty of things that we can talk about from this chapter. I'll be sure to release some discussion videos in the lead up to the next chapter. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss them. For now, I guess it's back to the main story. As the NEL draws to a close, I'm really looking forward to seeing the outcome of the Barcher vs. Manshine game and seeing if Nagi has made any improvements since the last time we saw him. 
My theory is Nagi scores a hat trick against Barcher, but I guess we'll see in due time. But until we do, for now, take care and God bless.